macOS and Apple devices are becoming more and more popular in the workplace, and Intune is now a real contender when it comes to managing these types of device. Apple Device Enrollment Program, as it used to be called, or now the Apple Business Manager Automated Device Enrollment, is pretty great at letting you automatically assign an MDM, in my case Intune, so that you can get up and running pretty quickly with new devices. But let's talk about users. So when you use an Apple device, you need an Apple ID to download apps or use any of the Apple Cloud features on the device if you want to. In many organizations, I've seen when they're setting up ABM, they typically let the users log in with their iCloud account, their personal iCloud account, if they've got one. And if they haven't, I've even seen them tell the users to set up their own iCloud account or Apple ID for their work email address. The thing is, there's probably a better way to do this. Apple makes it really simple to synchronize your users from Entra to your Apple Business Manager environment. So I'm going to walk through that process now. Now, I know a lot of Apple experts watch these videos that I'm doing to make sure I'm doing it right and not giving the wrong message. So thank you to those that do, and thanks for reaching out and letting me know when I do get things wrong. Do let me know if I miss a step or if you do anything different. It's really important that I get this right, I think. Firstly, in order to synchronize our users and allow them to log in with their work email address, we need to verify our Entra domain. So let's jump into Apple Business Manager now and take a look. As you can see, I've got a couple of users. I've got me and my wife. This is my company. We've, we have two accounts in the organization. So what I'm going to do first is uh, verify my lastcoffee.co.uk domain. So I'll just go to Preferences, Account, and here you can see we've got a domain already verified. We've got worksecureonline.appleid.com. That's the one that Apple generates for you automatically with the appleid.com at the end there. So I want to verify my lastcoffee.co.uk domain. So we'll choose edit, add a domain, and type lastcoffee.co.uk. Obviously you'll be typing your domain, not mine. Good. So this domain is not verified is the message we get and we need to verify it. Uh, there's not a lot we can do with just that information. We need to actually go to verify and get some more information about what it needs. And there we go. We need to create a text record in our DNS. So I'll copy this and I'll log into my DNS provider. And within GoDaddy, in this case, I've only got one domain with GoDaddy left because I'm not a huge fan. But we have uh, the domain here. I'm going to choose DNS. And we just need to add that text record. So I'm just going to go to add new record, choose text txt, and be at, and the string is just that string there that I've copied from Apple Business Manager right there. And we'll make it half an hour by the looks of it. That'll do. Okay, we'll save that. Give that a few seconds to Synchronized DNS can take a long time to uh, to replicate, I guess, around the environment, the world. So we'll give that a little while. And after a few seconds, as you can see, uh, I've chosen check now, and it says verified ownership. So now I own, well, I already did own lastcoffee.co.uk, but now it's verified that I do own lastcoffee.co.uk. Tons of emails coming through to my email address right now telling me that I've verified this domain. So that's great. Apple is obviously very communicative when it comes to that. So we now have a verified domain. Perfect. Now we can set some users up, right? So if I go to users and choose add, now I know I've got a, a user called Lucy tester. So I can do Lucy at last coffee to go to UK. You can see we've got these two options now for domain. We've got last coffee and work secure online. And I know that this person is just a staff member at work secure so that's good and their email address funnily enough is lucy at lastcoffee.co.uk and i choose save and i then get to send them a, a login if you give if you give this a few seconds to finish i can choose create sign in i can send it as an email and send it over to them and then they get to create their username and password well they their password for their Apple ID that I've just created for them, their managed Apple ID. Now that works okay. And you can see it took a few seconds for me to type that all in. And I guess that's okay. That kind of works for a couple of users. And it maybe if you're setting up your admins, then that works fine, right? If you've got two or three admins who need to manage Apple Business Manager, 
you might want to manually create those. But when we talk about allowing users to log into their work device, their Mac or their Apple uh, iPhone with their company credentials, it's not good enough to just set up their user here, type the right UPN and, and allow them to create a new password and log in because they might keep the same password, they might not, but it's technically a not single sign on. So let's do this better. We're going to need to do something called skim in order to allow automatic provisioning of entry users into the Apple Business Manager environment. Let's jump in and take a look how that works. So we're going to go to preferences again, down to uh, accounts, and you can see we've got this federated authentication. This is single sign on. So let's choose edit and we get to choose between Google Workspace and Microsoft Azure AD, or also known as Entra. We'll choose connect here. And it's going to ask me to sign in with Microsoft. So my global admin credentials are going to be needed right now. And there they are. The, what this will do is effectively create this enterprise application in my Apple, in my Entra environment. So we'll choose accept and we'll choose done. And you can see it says Microsoft Azure Active Directory is now configured. Now, one more thing we need to do is just federate this domain. So we're going to go into uh, accounts, just get into this and find the last coffee domain. I'm going to choose federate because it's not quite ready yet. So we're going to choose federate, just sign in with my lastcoffee.co.uk Microsoft account. Okay, so it says it's going to verify that there's no conflicts or any issues with federating this domain, and then it will uh, verify that it's ready to go, and hopefully there'll be no conflicts. We'll give it a few seconds. And back into edit. Okay, so we've got this verified ownership, perfect. And now we have federation not enabled. Let's choose federation here. It says enabling federation. It's gone green. That'll do for me. Choose done. Okay. And so let's take a look at what we can do next. It says to enable automatic creation of managed app. It says to enable automatic creation of managed Apple IDs, turn on directory sync. We can click that or that. They're quite close to each other. And here we can see we've got the Microsoft Azure AD sync, also known as Entra. We'll choose enable. And this is the token that we need in order to get this start the zoom level on this browser is not great for this particular page but never mind we need to configure the sync so we have the token and the tenant url very simple back over to my enter environment down to identity applications enterprise applications we'll now see this apple business manager environment right here created just today so i'll choose abm just move this to the left for us so we can see a bit more of the screen. You can see we've got something called provisioning. Very simple. Choose provisioning. Get started. And we're going to go with automatic provisioning. Now, the two things that we got from Apple Business Manager were a tenant URL and a secret token. And funnily enough, that's what we need. So we're going to take the tenant URL, pop that in there. And we're going to take the secret and pop that in there and choose test. There you go, that worked. Uh, now we get, if we choose save, we get an additional button down here called mappings. And with mappings, we're probably gonna keep this to the default. So this allows us to say which attributes we're gonna synchronize between the enter environment and Apple. And the ones that are default are, are good enough for what we need to do. The fields that we're gonna need are things like the given name, the surname, um, the department maybe, the the employee ID, certainly the user principal name are required by Apple. You can leave it at the default. Extra information is not required to set this up. So close that down. And then settings here, we get to say what happens in the event of a failure. So for example, we could send an email to me if a failure occurs. There we go. Very simple. Choose save. And then I'll get a notification whenever uh, synchronization failure occurs for whatever reason. You'd probably want to set that to a distribution group for your admins. 
to make sure that people were aware of when, when synchronization failures were occurring. Because remember, this will create a user in Apple Business Manager every time you create an eligible user within Entra. So great for onboarding new users. So let's take a look at what we do next. If we go back to Apple Business Manager Overview and choose and take a look here, we've got uh, provisioning. Now, I haven't yet configured which users I want to be able to provision. So if I choose Start Provisioning, it's not going to do much because there's no users within scope. So we've got to go back one, click on Users and Groups, and this is the set of users who will be synchronized, automatically provisioned into Apple Business Manager. I'll choose Add User and Group, and I'm going to just search for my Apple users. There we go. So I've got a group of users who are allowed to use Apple devices and we use conditional access to allow them or not allow them in my environment. I'll choose that and then choose select. And this will mean that only you, those users will be provisioned. And that means you don't provision all of the users in the, in the environment. That would be a scary thing to do. So we'll choose assign. And now in this group, I've got my Apple device users. Very simple. Now I don't want them to be able to access Apple Business Manager necessarily. They don't need to do that as part of their job. So you can see at the top it says the application will appear for assigned users in my apps. Not really useful. I'm going to choose properties on there. I want to allow users to sign in using this, but I don't want it to be visible to them in their my apps. So very simple. And now we can go over to provisioning and see if that first sync has started. It hasn't. The first provisioning cycle has not started yet. So provisioning details here. You can see it's going to We've no idea how long it's going to take, but it's going to provision every 40 minutes, which is good enough for me. So we'll choose Start Provisioning, get that first synchronization starting, and get those users provisioned into Apple Business Manager. And then this will happen roughly every 40 minutes from now on. So when I create a new user in Entra, it will automatically be provisioned in Apple Business Manager. So while that's running, we'll head into Provisioning. As you can see, we've got those settings that we set there, also provisioning status on or off. If we go to users and groups, you can see it's still me that has the uh, default access there, and then the users that will be provisioned will be the uh, users in the Apple device users group. And finally, back up to overview, and you can see we have it 100% complete. The initial provisioning has completed. You can choose view provisioning log, but there's not actually anything in there yet because it takes a little while for these logs to appear. So we can just check, I guess, to see what happened. All right, so back over to Apple Business Manager then to see if these accounts have been provisioned. We'll choose user. And uh, okay, so we have a new user creator. We already had Lucy. Okay, so we have uh, a couple of new users created. We have Jenny and Timmy. We already had Lucy because I created that user manually, but now we also have Jenny and Timmy Tester. So choose Jenny, and you can see that there's no there's no um, send uh, credentials or whatever whatever it was called create sign in button. So with this account, they've already got a sign in. They can already sign in directly with their federated user account. So Lucy will be able to sign in with Lucy at lastcoffee.co.uk and she'll have permissions as a staff member within this environment. So that's pretty much done from my perspective. We have the users now automatically provisioned into Apple Business Manager as soon as I create a user within Entra. If they're in the right group, in the Apple device users group, Within a, an hour or so, they'll be provisioned into Apple Business Manager automatically and ready to use their work credentials to sign into their iPhone or iCloud on their Mac. As you can see, this is a really full solution for managing users within the Apple environment. It goes much further than just creating your admins and allowing your users to have free reign of their devices by logging in with their personal Apple ID. Take a look at this. It's extremely important that you get this right from a user experience point of view and the admin point of view. See you next time.